We're going to call the April 27th Board of Public Works and Safety meeting to order. Um, we don't have any announcements. We do have a presentation today. Uh, I believe Jason Taylor with respect to the 116th Street closure for the tunnel construction of the Nickel Plate Trail. Jason. Good afternoon, Jason Taylor, uh, Director of Engineering. Thank you for taking the time. I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Tracy, I may need your help here. There we go. All right, and, and you have a copy of this as well. Correct. Essentially, this is just an update on the Nickel Plate Trail Tunnel and the 116th Street closure and some of the preceding work for that tunnel. Uh, on the, in front of you as well as on the screen, you can see uh, a lane restriction, and what that is is that it's the northernmost westbound lane of 116th Street, and this is going to be coming up on Thursday through May 6th. Uh, the reason that it needs to have a, a full lane restriction, originally it wasn't planned to be so, um, but Vectran, or now Center Point is what they're called, um, their line is deeper than they really anticipated some of the safety requirements for shoring and other items. So they requested um, late last night if they could do a full lane restriction on this. Originally they were planned to be in the sidewalk area, but due to safety concerns, their contractor felt that both for them and for their, um, for their workers and for the motoring public, it'd be best to do, go ahead and do that. So from Thursday until May 6th, it will be a full lane restriction and in which they will backfill that and it will be completed. And then immediately after that, from May 6th, we show on the exhibit May 3rd, but immediately following uh, Center Point's work, Meyer Najum and our construction team will have a lane restriction of that same lane, but it'll only be between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So we're trying to make sure that we're not impacting um, the a.m. and p.m. peaks uh, unless we absolutely need to. So what they'll end up doing is, um, They'll, you, they'll plate that work, and this is so that they can get some shoring in, and it's really to preserve some of that nickel plate uh, bar and grill, the building itself, and protect it for whenever they come in and they're doing the, uh, the actual excavation of 116th Street for the tunnel placement. But I just wanted to make sure we got it out in front of you as the board, and if you had any questions, we have to answer them. So the work by Centerpoint is 24-7 closure. Correct. Are they are they working twenty four seven or are they just working? No, they will they will not be working twenty four seven. I suspect that um, they're still getting information to us. I suspect that they'll be twelve hour days in order to be able to get this done. They understand the importance of them getting out of there as quickly as possible so that our contractor can get in because we we don't have a significant amount of um, float in our schedule to allow for any major delays. Okay, so that's till May 6th, but the other other one's May 3rd, so. Yeah, this was exhibit was put together prior to um, yesterday, whenever right. we were informed that they, they need to do a full lane closure. It was going to be a, in coordination um, item, but now with them being, that they need to do the full lane closure, uh, we're just gonna adjust ours to, to immediately after theirs. We already did that. We, I believe that was last week. Um, we did that. We had, we worked with the Fishers Police Department. Um, they went out and did a, a full, like a 10, 15 minute rolling stop uh, in which they brought those down. So those are officially out of the, the picture and have been transferred up to the Hamilton County for the HHPA to utilize north along the lines. Yeah. But, all right. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, with that, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, Jason and I were both present at the April 13th meeting, so I don't think there's any reason why we can't. No, just a quick comment on the consent agenda. Um, 
You might notice item C on there is not a typical item that we put yes. on the consent agenda. It's a request to approve a payment in lieu of trail agreement. This agreement is an agreement that you already approved at a former board meeting. We yeah. just caught an error after the fact and we had the wrong resolution attached to the agreement. So we're sticking it up on the uh, consent agenda just to make sure that you go ahead and approve again the resolution just for transparency purposes so we can attach the right resolution to the agreement. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, any questions? No. All right, with that motion approved. So moved. I'll second motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving on to resolutions. Item number five. Request to approve temporary right of entry and indemnity agreement with Citizens Energy Group. Is that you, Chris? Yep. I'll go ahead and take this. For the record, Chris Greisel, attorney uh, for the city of Fishers. Citizens is exploring um, the possibility of putting a water booster station at our park at 106th and Cumberland. And Tracy, if you can scroll down to that exhibit page right there. That red hash line mark is the area where they're gonna go and do some kind of geotech work and preliminary explanation work to see um, whether or not there's a fit there. And so this right of entry uh, allows them to go do some of that investigative work uh, prior to the construction so that they can come back and know if there's a go and then work with city staff to figure out whether we're gonna put a booster station at that location or not. That would be an above ground booster station is that a relation to the water reservoir, the capacity addition? At <clears throat> so it'd be for additional capacity and I think pressure for this portion of fissures that it's affecting. So you may recall they put the station in over at 136 right off of um, Cynthia Ann Road out there. It's uh, not gonna be as tall of a booster, it's an enclosed trapment. I don't have the specific dimensions of what they're proposing. I will certainly soon. Um, but they're thinking about just putting something in that portion of the land to provide additional capacity to the south side of Fishers. Okay. Jason, any questions? Nope. All right, with that, I'll make a motion to approve. I'm looking for a second. Second. Motion by Jeff, second by Jason. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Yep. Thank Item you. number six, request to approve change order. Number one for the Allison Road and Hague Road lift station improvement project. Jonathan. Jonathan. Good afternoon, Jonathan Valenta, Assistant Director of Public Works, Water Quality. Uh, during an inspection, there was a significant defect uh, that was discovered in the 27-inch pipe that flows into the Hague Road lift station. Um, this defect was allowing a tremendous amount of groundwater uh, into the sanitary sewer system. So in order to repair this defect, uh, it called for an installation of a cured-in-place pipe. Uh, total amount of this change order is $104,790. It brings a new contract amount to $2,729,790, which is below the budgeted $3 million. Uh, staff recommends the approval of change order number one and asks the board to authorize the mayor to execute the agreement. Be happy to answer any questions. I just, so how, I thought we do a lot of due diligence before these. I remember this project. Yes. So just didn't anticipate the flow? <clears throat> so there is flow, it, depending on when that defect took place, which is thought to be uh, pretty significant for quite some time. Um, the ability to actually TV that line, because it is an isolated line that goes in, um, it requires a bypass pumping situation. So while we had bypass pumping in place, we were actually able to inspect that line. Okay, so it was an existing defect. line? Yes. So, okay, yes. Oh, it wasn't, okay. It wasn't yes, part of the, the original scope, okay. Yes, no, this is an existing line into gotcha. the station. Okay. Okay, motion approved. So moved. I'll second, motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries, thanks Jonathan. Thank you very thanks, much. Jonathan. Uh, item number seven, request to approve resolution declaring city property as surplus. Tabitha on. I'll go ahead and take this for Tabitha. I, there's two surplus resolutions. This first one is for purposes of a future trade-in. So you'll notice that there's four vehicles that are yep. listed on this uh, resolution agreement. So first step is surplusing the item before we prepare to trade it in. Do you have any questions on that one? No. No, I feel like I hear Tabitha in the background somewhere. Yeah, I hear. Or maybe that's Chief in the... 
Yeah, oh. Sorry. It sounded, <laughs> it sounded like Tabitha. Tabitha. It really did. Um, or Tabitha. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> uh, sorry. Any questions on the first uh, audit number seven? No. All right, motion. You did? You made the motion? No, I'm asking for one. So moved. I will second. Motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Item number eight, uh, resolution to approve city property as surplus scrap. Again, Chris Greisel, for the record, the uh, second surplus resolution here is just for three assets that the Department of Fleet Management is seeking to scrap. Let me know if you have any questions on those. So just beyond repair, Chris, basically? They are out of age, out of date. I'm sorry. Yes, they've reached their useful life. No trade-in value. Gotcha. All right, with that, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jeff, second by Jason. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number nine, request to amend statement of work for VMware Cloud on Amazon Web Services. Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, man behind the. Please, yeah, one. Man behind the curtain, aka mass. So uh, before you, this is really just a um, a slight change in the statement of work for an item that was brought to the board back in December on our VMware Cloud on Amazon Web Services initiative, and the integrator that we partnered with at the time just happened to get acquired by another company. So since they have. Uh, uh, got involved, we went in and revisited the scope of work, uh, tweaked it a little bit, and uh, adjusted it to, to more accurately reflect their organization and the people that will be involved in the project. Now there's no change, actually the change in scope uh, is not insignificant, but there's no change in cost to the city. So this is really just a, a mechanism to ensure that we can continue with the project. Happy to answer any questions. Questions? No. Motion to approve. So moved. I will second. Motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 10, request to renew GIS or t software from ER ESRI. Tracy. Yep. Uh, again, Tracy with IT. This is just our annual renewal of the enterprise license agreement that we go into with a few different software companies. This particular one is with ESRI, our GIS vendor, which is a sole source and is on a state QPA. Every three years, we enter into a new contract um, that is basically based on your your city's size, so it's not based on, it's, it's unlimited use, so their software basically. Uh, significant savings over licensing these things individually, and uh, obviously the department highly recommends that we continue on with that program. Happy to answer any questions. Questions? No. No. Motion? So moved. I will second. Motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 11, request to renew Microsoft ELA with CD, CDWG for 2021. Tracy. Uh, again, uh, Tracy with IT. This is a uh, similar enterprise license agreement. Uh, the reseller is CDWG. This is for our Microsoft enterprise license agreement. Covers a wide range of software from uh, client applications, like just basic email access to cloud applications, OneDrive, Teams. Uh, up to server applications that we have in our data centers, database servers, um, down to, uh, we did have a slight increase this last year with uh, the decentralized workforce and, and people working more remotely. We added some audio conferencing for teams for meetings and allowing public meetings and this type of things to continue virtually. But uh, this, like the ESRI contract, this is a three-year agreement and Microsoft actually has a, pro uh, a program that allows you to annually true up so as, seat counts change and staffing levels change. Just annually we adjust that, but we lock in this pricing. Um, and uh, it's basically covers just about everything we have with Microsoft. Happy to answer any questions. Questions? All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jeff, second by Jason. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion Thanks, carries. Sir. Thanks, Tracy. Item number 12, request to approve park food vendor agreements. Sarah. Hi, uh, Sarah Sanquist, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, we submitted an RFP to uh, seek vendors in our parks to park vehicles and offer uh, shaved ice and other uh, beverages. 
and uh, before you have an agreement to award those uh, contracts to two vendors, one is Rosen Lois and one is Kona Ice. Uh, Rosen Lois will be vending out of Holland Park and Kona Ice will be at uh, Flat Fork Creek Park, Burke School Park, and Billericay Park. Okay, questions? So I assume that both exhibits are the same. The only one I saw was for Kona Ice. I think it's on the Rosen Lois right now. Yeah, they're both the same. Uh, well, they're different in that, that uh, Rosen Lois has a revenue share of 25% and Kona has That's one 20. of 20%. So do we need that as part of this, Chris, to vote on it, the exhibit? Say that again, Jason. I only saw one exhibit on the agenda. I didn't. Yeah. That one's Kona Ice right now. And then, if you look in the um, yeah page, if nine. you look in the exhibit, Jason, it's oh. the park food vendor agreement. And then if yeah. you scroll down to the back of it, so there's a um, page nine. Part okay. of the okay. Page okay. nine starts the second agreement. Yep, and then All there's right, Rosen Lois. Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay. So the first portion is Kona Ice. The second portion portion oh. is the Rosen okay. Lois. Sounds good. Do you see what we're looking at? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was looking for that earlier. And then it's got its individual exhibits for those agreements. Perfect. Yep. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Nope. Motion? So moved. I'll second. Motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, Sarah. Item number 13, request to approve a resolution dedicating a portion of Brook School Road as a public right of way along Brook School Elementary. Jason. Jason, Jason Taylor, Director of Engineering. Uh, before you is the dedication of right of way for the Brooks, in front of Brook School Elementary. Uh, this is um, before you because whenever the, the school built their, their building and their site, uh, at that time the, right, the right of way was not dedicated per our thoroughfare plan. Uh, in conversations with the school superintendent at the time, as well as some of the staff, they are in favor of dedication of our, per our thoroughfare plan, which is a 50 foot um, half right of way. And this is right there at Brook School and 126th on the west side. Um, that would put the right of way line behind the existing path that is along Brook School Road. Uh, typically, we would have this partially executed before coming to you, but just in a manner of trying to keep this moving. Um, we went ahead and we would like substantially, was a legal terms, Chris, essentially, we would like for you to approve it, assuming there are no substantial changes to the dedication of the right of way. And if there were any, we would make sure to bring it back to the board. Okay, questions? No. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve with assuming that there's no substantial changes to the agreement as it stands today. Second. Second. Motion by Jeff, second by Jason. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, Thank Jason. you. Item number 14, request to approve new rental rates for Saxony Hall and Ambassador House. Sarah. Hi, Sarah Sanquist, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, we would like to request to adjust the fees at uh, Saxony Hall and the Ambassador House. And so here uh, on the screen is a um, document of all of our rates and the ones that are highlighted are the proposed changes. So at Saxony Hall, we'd like to do two things. First of all, we'd like to um, raise our rates. Uh, we haven't raised our rates in, in quite a while. Um, so we did some benchmarking with other facilities within the area um, for comparable rates. Um, this is a 5% rate increase. Then we'd also like to uh, adjust the way that we um, book Saxony Hall. So changing the, the rates from um, offering it as a, a social event, a corporate event, a wedding, um, we would like to change it to a four hour rental, an eight hour rental, and a 12 hour rental. And the four hour and the eight hour rental would now um, be able to be booked online by the customer themselves. It would be similar to how you book a, um, a building at Holland Park or at Billericay. Uh, and then that 12 hour rental would be, you know, for graduation parties, weddings, things that require alcohol or typically have alcohol with them, uh, would be booked through a staff member, have staff on site and uh, go through a similar process to what we have right now uh, with the level of uh, staffing that we're providing. 
then uh, same process, or not the same process, but the same um, review of rates at Ambassador House uh, with comparable locations and amenities that are provided within their fees. Um, we're requesting that we increase these rates by 5%. Also on, uh, I think it's just Ambassador, but we have not been charging non-residents 50% more. Um, and so these rate changes reflect that change to adjust to the um, the council directive to charge non-residents 50% more. I'm happy to answer any questions. Jason, I know this is near and dear to your heart, so. I know, well, questions? it's good to see it get captured because I know we spent a lot more money on the tent rental earlier this year or last year, correct? Actually, we saved money on the uh, tent rental I this year. Spent more for some reason. But it has been more in previous years. Yeah, so, um, so the other only question I have was the social event on Ambassador House. So four hours is only 125, or is that should read per hour? Uh, I think that is per it says hour. Ambassador social event just says $125. Yeah, that's per 85. hour. That's per hour. And then, the, well, no, 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 that's for an additional hour. So. Um, is that different? Because I know we have a social event at Saxony, but not a line item specific to social event. So is there a specific price for social event only? That might not be a wedding? Yes. So that is, sorry, I'm pulling this up on my side. <clears throat> well, actually, yeah, the, so the, um, the ambassador social event, that is a four, where the access has four hour minimum. So that is an hourly rate, $85 for residents per hour, or 125 okay. per hour with a minimum booking of four hours. You can book it for longer than four okay. hours. So. Okay. That's why we have the um, the rate broken down gotcha. by hour. And then those service fees and the security fee, those are um, those are just straight costs that we charge um, and then pay directly back to a third party vendor. So we don't gotcha. um, have non-resident rates on those. Gotcha. All right, cool. Good. Okay. Looking for a motion. So moved. Motion, uh, I'll second. Motion by Jason, second by Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Item number 15, request to approve resolution declaring certain property as surplus. Chief Gebhardt. Thanks for your time today, guys. We had Lieutenant Darren Emmons. I'm just pulling it up here. Lieutenant Darren Emmons retired 27 years of service, so customary 20 plus years of service to the city of Fishers, law enforcement in general, that Darren Sig Sauer P22940 Cal be surplus to him so he can take it for his service to our community. Any questions? No. Nope. Right. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, thanks for his service. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. 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 All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Chris, any other unfinished or new business items? Nope. All right, with that, motion adjourn. So moved. All right, I'll second. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>